The stunning natural beauty of Alberta was on full display when I visited a rare Arabian horse ranch near Red Deer. I met with the owner, Troy Walker, to hear his incredible story of how God rescued him from a life of darkness and addiction, transforming him into a loving husband and father and very successful Canadian entrepreneur. Troy, we're so thankful to be visiting you here at your ranch and these stables are just beautiful. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> Yeah, the horses love it. You know what? They love sooner being in the field, rolling in the dirt. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. You know, right now, at this day and age in your life, uh, you're a very successful entrepreneur and businessman who's had incredible impact on Canadian businesses across the nation. And, um, you know, you give all glory to God. You give all yeah. credit to God. Uh, I know that about you. Yeah. But you've also got three beautiful children, a beautiful wife. Life yeah. is bountiful yeah. and full of blessing. It sure is. Um, but going back in your upbringing, uh, you didn't know God when you were a youngster and you didn't grow up in a Christian home. Tell us a bit about those early years. I was the youngest of six kids and we were pretty rough. My brothers and, and my siblings were, you know, pretty unruly. My parents, my parents um, they worked a lot just to keep milk in the fridge. So they weren't home a lot. So we, we didn't have a lot of... Uh, discipline and uh, so from a very very young age I was in, involved with stuff that I shouldn't have been as a young kid just because of the older siblings so it was first time using drugs at eight years old and and hard drugs by the time I was 12 like chemicals like acid and, mm. and uh, you know it's totally miraculous but I remember again I've, when I was 15 my goal in life was to live to 20 that was my goal all I wanted to be was a drug addict and a rock star. That's all I wanted to be. Part of your journey into living out life like your brothers in bad behavior mm -hmm. and um, even into self-medicating with drugs had to do with some things spoken over you, um, mistakenly really, you know, by your mom. Yeah. What happened in those moments? Because I had trouble learning, very dyslexic, and, and uh, didn't I couldn't even read a clock uh, uh, or uh, the alphabet, I couldn't recite the alphabet till I was in late grade two it just it, the numbers and letters are all backwards but so essentially she was going through the trouble but she said something over me which I was hidden behind the the wall and they didn't know I was there listening to them as she was weeping and she says you know troubled kids and they're always fighting they're always the girls are running around and what these guys kids are unruly and and I have a son who's dumb or stupid and I just remember that moment and it just came down like a weight I felt it and then from that day forward it didn't matter what I did in school I could never pass anything it was just because I accepted the fact of those words mm -hmm. and those words were on me and those words defined me and I just I just thought to myself you know my lot was defined yeah. my future was defined by by that and uh but God had a different plan the irony is that, as you said, um, God had different plans because, in fact, you're incredibly bright. You're known today in business to be a very critical thinker who can even foresee which directions to go in. Mm -hmm. And so very opposite, very opposite to the labeling you experienced. And I can see how that would suffocate you, even as a child, right. that I'm not bright when you are very bright. It's just in a different way. Yeah, that's true. You know, I didn't get an ability to read and write, although I'm very good with legal documents because I have to look at every word because like a P is a D and a Q is a P or a D or whatever. So it's all very scrambled. But the wisdom that he did give me was something different. It was, it was the ability to see ahead or around the corner and knowing this plus this equals this and or trends and or inventions and, uh, all these things that, that God has actually given me and, and uh, I've been so thankfully a part of watching his hand move greatly. And it, we're, you know, we've invented products that are now global um, in the explosives world, uh, uh, processing buildings that are now literally law um, mm -hmm. through North America and, and utilizing this kind of thing and just looking back and saying, God, you're crazy awesome and that ability to think critically and ha have that high fluid reasoning. Uh, such a gift from God. You know, as you were moving past eight years old and getting closer to 14 and 15 and, and moving into those chemical drugs, those harder drugs, you guys were a rock band 
And you were into all kinds of stuff, oh, yeah. a lot of dark stuff. Oh, it was very dark. If you could imagine walking into a satanic cult, um, we had such demonic, even activity that went on in the room and that just spooky stuff. And I remember the Christians many, many years telling me after that time that they said when they walk in that room and their skin would crawl, they could feel the demonic forces in that room, but yet they came in anyhow. Mm -hmm. And when they came in, um, even the first time they came into that room, they were coming to share Jesus with you and your bandmates. Yep. They said some things to you also that were very bold. They said things over you oh, yeah. and that got your attention. What happened there? It was wild because they, they come and they, they came in that room and you know, I don't know if uh, like the, the, the Bible talks about the prophetic word and the prophetic word of when, when God speaks to these, these powerful Christians and they, they get a word from God from you. And I remember they come in and they're walking through the cloud of dope smoke. Anyhow, they said, yeah, God spoke to me and this is what he said. And I, they read my mail. Like I was like, who talked to you? Who were you talking to? How, how did you know these things? Like I was like, and then also they talked about my future. They talked about what was going to happen in my future. They talked about the things that, that I was about to do in years, like five, six years from that moment. And it was absolutely 100% accurate. When you're that person and, they, and you're hearing them speaking to you from something that was inspired from heaven, it changes you. And it did me. It changed me. It's beautiful. And that group of Christians didn't leave you there. They kept coming back to you and your bandmates. Yep. And then they started inviting you to Bible studies mm -hmm. and you guys went mm -hmm. and some powerful things happened to the entire group of you. What happened? Yeah, it was crazy. Cause we all kind of like, we were still in big party mode, right? So it was like, he took a little bit to get the hell out of us. You know what I'm saying? And I remember, you know, speci specifically Paula, she was really skeptical because we started dating when we were 14 years old. So we, we, she was there she was like, Matter of fact, when they asked us if we wanted to give ours to Jesus, her answer was, nope, <laughs> nope, I'll see what these crazy guys do first. And, and, uh, but anyhow, what happened was we all ended up basically coming to Jesus at the same time. They all ended up not just being Christians, but pastors and leaders. And now it was like incredible what happened from a bunch of, dude, God uses the unlikely. Isn't it crazy? <laughs> just the unlikely. Wow. Yeah. It's powerful. And uh, your wife, Paula, and you today are serving the Lord. When you gave uh, your heart to the Lord, you also then, after that, made the decision to get baptized. You were 20 years old. Yeah. And at the start of our conversation, you said that you didn't believe you'd live to be past 20. Mm -hmm. But technically, did you, didn't you? Tell us about the moment you got baptized. You know what? Once I got baptized, there was something that broke. The power of hell broke. The, the addictions, the, 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 the stuff that was really holding me back was buried in that baptism water. And it was absolutely a changing point in my life. Coming out of that water, I did come out as a new creation. And I thank God for it. And, you know, all the hell and all those things were left in that grave of the baptism tank. And uh, it, was, it was miraculous. It was miraculous for me. So at 20, you did. You died to yourself and you were reborn a new man serving yeah. God. It was powerful, and, and I really recommend, if you haven't been baptized, get baptized. It, it, it's, the, the Bible talks about this, and the death, burial, and resurrection, and that's what it is. It's the resurrection of Christ, the most powerful event that ever happened in history, and that's exactly what happens when you get baptized, coming out of that water. It's, it's powerful. Troy, for that person watching right now who is feeling bound by addiction or things they've done, things that have happened to them and thinks that life cannot be different. I like what this man is saying, but how can Jesus rescue me? Mm -hmm. What would you say to them? You know what? God has a plan for your life and it's bigger than you. And we look at things that we think are insurmountable and they're so huge and so they're nothing to the Lord. The Lord is so powerful and so able to change you in an instant, in a heartbeat. And there's a plan, there's a process, and he's good at it. He's really good at it. He's really good at taking broken things and fixing them. He's really good at taking broken people and changing them. He's really, really good at taking the most unlikely and using them to do the most unbelievable. And you know what? 
I don't have to defend God. I don't have to convince you of God. All you have to do is come to his presence. And this is what they did with us. They said to me, they said, look it. Because I was waiting for the Christians to judge me. My hair was down to my, you know, I had long hair. I was scary. So I, I came in there and I remember saying to Paula and Grant, I said, okay, the first person tells me to cut my hair and to tell me to stop smoking and stop doing this and stop doing that, I'm out of here. I know they're a bunch of hypocrites. But you know what? They never did. You know what all they said to me? I said, Troy, just keep getting closer to Jesus. As I kept getting closer to Jesus, those things that in my life, they were like the, the leaves and fall. They just dried up and fell off because I just kept getting closer to Jesus. And there wasn't no judgment. There wasn't no people coming at me and, and looking at me down their nose because I thought they would because I just, I've been judged all my life. And, uh, and they didn't. And thank God for that. And as a Christian, I want to be that same thing. I don't want to judge people. I don't want to look at because they're broken people just like me and you mm-hmm. that need Jesus. You know, as you think about the future, God's future for Alberta, for Canada, what's on your heart? Mm-hmm. How do you see God mobilizing people and even you to be yeah. part of what he wants to do? You know what? A lot of people talk about Canada's broken. I've said it many times too, but here's the reality. We're to be the salt and the light. And like I said, the truth shines. And the principles that have been accepted and and the slippery slope, I believe, in my opinion, that we've taken as a nation, it didn't work. And the fruit is on the vine. You can see the results of it. We're more divided now. We're more separated now. We're, you know, but the alternative, when you see righteous and the true the fruit that's there, the fruit of the spirit that's there. And it's, it's an example for the world to see. And it's very obvious. And I believe that there's a hope and a future for the, for tomorrow. And I think this next generation coming up is going to realize and is seeing it. I'm hearing it. I'm watching it because it's, it's, they're longing for something real. They're longing for the truth. And it's not just wisdom they can learn on the internet. There's something that they can see, touch, and feel. Mm -hmm. And we need each other. We're all connected. And I believe we're going to be in seeing the greatest revival that we've ever seen. We're living in a great great time right now. Yes. Troy, such a good word. We are. We're living in a great season of God's outpouring across this nation. Thank you for being such a bright light and a bold voice for the truth of who Jesus is and what he does in our lives. Thank you for being with us today on 100 Huntley Street. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you.